Hello. So I'm an artist who creates things by growing them, but growing them algorithmically inside a computer. And what really fascinates me are the types of forms that you see in nature, in particular the types of forms that when you see them, you know instinctively that they're being created by a living thing through a process of growth. And what is it that's different about that type of form compared with man-made structures created by traditional top-down design and construction? What is it about natural forms that resonate so deeply with us? I think there's something about natural, organic form and structure that we're particularly attuned to, from things we find quite beautiful to things that we find disturbing. And why is it that these types of forms elicit such a strong range of aesthetic reaction? The other big thing that I'm really interested in is the idea of emergence. The idea that a rich, complex structure, an ordered or even disordered structure, can often come from incredibly simple processes. So what I'm doing is I'm writing code in the computer that represents rules for how things grow. So what I've got are cells, and cells need food to grow. And food can be created by various different means, such as light rays coming in from outside, hitting cells. And the cells that get the most light rays create the most food. And then f cells can be greedy and take all that food themselves, or they can be cooperative and share the food with their neighbors. And <clears throat> then various different things can affect how the cells develop, how they grow, such as which direction does a cell split in when it divides? Does it split in the direction of most tension in the structure or least tension? Or does the curvature of the surface affect direction of splitting, or gravity? So there are lots of different things, all of which could potentially change how things grow in interesting but also very difficult to predict ways. So what I'm doing is I'm writing code in the computer to basically examine, explore this space of possibilities, what you could consider an artificial biology. So what you're seeing on the screen are some of my simulations running. And they all start with a small ball of just 42 cells. And then over time, the cells split. And over thousands of time steps, this develops into a structure with over 50 million cells. And what I'm doing is I'm influencing things in the way that maybe like a plant breeders could try to create new plant types. So I might generate a few hundred what are called seedlings, basically forms with a million cells in them. And then on those seedlings, I might look at and find, OK, there's just a few of them that I think look particularly interesting. And I could crossbreed them with each other to hopefully produce seedlings which are even more interesting. Then if I find a seedling I really like, I can, might be able to generate randomness around it, almost like mutate its artificial DNA to see whether that produce is you know, more interesting variety around it. So you can see what I'm doing is more like an artificial version of natural selection, what you could describe as being survival of the intriguing rather than survival of the fittest. So everything I've been showing you so far, all the, all the cells are the same in the, in the structures, so just like structures with just one cell type. Now I'm going to show you what happens when you start introducing more cells into the structure. Actually, these are structures where I've, they're just actually two different cell types, what I call hybrid forms. So they start with again, a small ball of cells, but the cell at the top has one set of properties, and the cell at the bottom has a different set of properties. And then over time, as the cells develop, they basically, the different cell types can grow in different ways, so potentially make different geometries or different structures or grow at different rates, effectively compete with each other for space as the form grows. And I think that you can see is 
what you get from even such a small addition to the system, just one extra cell in the mix, are surprisingly lifelike structures. And to most of you, it really surprised me. I mean, I was expecting more variety, but the structures, um, basically it's real emergence, because I was expecting more variety, but it's far, far richer than I expected it would be, just introducing one extra cell into the, into the system. And one idea I think that's really interesting for this is the idea that how nature potentially works is by creating them as a system that can create rich possibilities, rich order, what the experimental uh, biologist Stuart Kaufman calls order for free. And then evolution through natural selection can basically choose between these possibilities. Instead of having to design everything, it's choosing between possibilities which have advantage for the creature, what things that help it survive. And I was following this idea, could we use similar ideas ourselves when we're designing and creating things? So instead of designing everything from the top down, or coming up with a blueprint of all the components and how they all assemble together, coming up with a process and exploring and trying to influence that to do the things that we're interested in. So what I'm next going to show you are some of the recent experiments that I've been doing in that direction, where what I'm trying to create are almost like vase-like sculptures that potentially could be fabricated as actually as physical sculptures. And what I've been intending to work with is this robotic machinery that works by depositing layers of material at a time. And there's some limits to what you can fabricate with this type of machinery. In particular, so that you can't have more than a certain overhang because every layer needs to have at least something underneath it to support the next layer. So there's sort of some constraints and limits that you can actually fabricate with. Right, so what I'm trying to do is influence the growth <coughs> in the ways that you might try to influence a plant growing by almost having wires for the plant to grow on or more or less nutrient in different areas where you want to encourage the plant to grow in some places, maybe discourage it in others. So what I'm wanting to create is these vase-like structures with almost like a flat bottom and a flat top. So I'm starting with a tubular structure, and the cells at the top and the cells at the bottom have to basically stay in two planes. And then there are various different influences which are hopefully going to modify how it grows to naturally create vase-like structures without me dictating exactly what that means. So firstly, cells towards the top can grow faster than cells towards the bottom. So maybe you're likely to get shapes which are broader, wider at the top than the bottom. Then the rate of growth can also be affected by as the cells grow outwards to potentially limit the growth so that it doesn't grow too far. And then finally, also introduced an influence so based on the angle between the cells. So as the angle between the cells gets beyond certain limits, that can slow down the growth to hopefully naturally create structures that would be fabricable with the machinery that I was intending to use. So what I got was I expected, but really not in the way I was sort of almost hoping originally. What I got with these structures that start growing these almost like really intricate, branching, tendril-like structures. And what was happening here, there's actually was a bug in my code, so that a cell that sticks slightly further out than its neighbors tends to grab all the food. So it tends to be the focus where all the growth happens. And also, the way that I'd thought about doing influencing the growth based on the angle between the cells, I hadn't quite thought through carefully enough. It was having the effect of almost solidifying, almost like making sort of like solid rock any cells which are tending towards horizontal. So basically, I'd accidentally created rules to grow these branches. So real emergence, I hadn't deliberately programmed it to create these structures. The, the system almost just exploited my bugs to do it. And I actually think they're really quite beautiful. So useless to make sculptures with at least the current machinery I was tending to use, but actually just really quite beautiful in their, their own way. And I think also more subtle than if I deliberately tried to create branching structures, I don't think I would have created things nearly as interesting and natural and subtle to them. 
So one thing about being art, this has almost become like an accidental sort of extra art series. So I can't fabricate these as sculptures, but they can exist virtually, digitally. So I'm presenting these as stereoscopic installations, so you can perceive them three-dimensionally, but in a virtual space. I then went back to the code and had a look at it, and learning from what I'd seen, basically fixed the bugs and changed the influences. And now I'm getting forms like these, which were much more what I was initially hoping for, to be fabricable sculptural shapes. And I'm now actually starting to fabricate these. So these are still at present just about 40 centimeter high, quite small sculptures, but I'm hoping now to be able to fabricate these much bigger. And I think one thing I'm seeing is a really interesting range of natural form in these structures. Particularly having different growth rates in different areas seems to produce interesting variation and contrast of what's like smoothness and detail. And also, the structures often have what I think are potentially really interesting structural properties, things like grooves, like bark, which potentially are really strong when they're fabricated. So one thing I'm learning from these experiments is how powerful this idea of emergence is. The idea of creating things through generative systems and influencing the results. Another big thing I'm learning is that you often need to tread quite carefully. It's very much a process of learning, a process of discovery, finding out what happens and appropriate ways of influencing the results. Complex systems are capable of doing amazing things, but it's also in their nature to do the unexpected. Of course, this can also be great, leading you in new directions that you never imagined were possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm.